Okay, for this video, I'll be making a soccer ball in AutoCAD. I know this has been covered on other channels and I've seen several videos, but most of them were either silent or they just had music playing or they were in a different language. So I thought I'd go ahead and make my own video. So let's get into it. I'll be using the metric ACAD ISO template, but I want to change the drawing units to centimeters. And I can do that by typing dash DWG units. And that will open up this text window. You can see in the list that centimeters is number four. So I'll type four. Uh, unit display, I want decimal. So that's two. Display precision, four. And for the rest of these, I can just accept the defaults by hitting enter. Now I can close this window and I can check my settings by typing units and I can see that type is set to decimal, precision is four places, and insertion scale is set to centimeters. Next I want to make sure that I have my object snaps enabled so I can either hit F3 or I can come down here and click this button and then right click on the button and make sure I have endpoint, midpoint, intersection, and geometric center selected. Next, I need to create a couple layers. So if I go up here to the Home tab on the ribbon and click Layer Properties, I can click this button to create a new layer. And I'm going to call this one White. And I'll set the color to 255. For the next layer, I'm going to call this one blue. Set the color to 150. But you can set yours to black or red or whatever color you want. And the last thing I want to do is enable the grid and ortho mode. You can do that by either hitting F7 and F8. Or you can come down here to the bottom and click this button to turn on the grid and this one to turn on ortho mode. And now I can get started. First thing I'm going to do is create a polygon. And you can do that by either typing the command or come up here to the home tab and click this little down arrow and select polygon. For the number of sides for this one I want five. The uh, center of polygon, 0, comma, 0. I want it to be inscribed. And for the radius of the circle, I'm going to use 7.5. Now I need this edge to be parallel with the y-axis. So I'm going to rotate around 0, comma, 0 with a rotation angle of 18 degrees. Now I'm going to create another polygon, with the number of sides being 6, and I'm going to come down here and click Edge, and then select this endpoint and this endpoint. Next I need a couple of temporary construction lines. First one from this endpoint over, next one from this endpoint down. And I'm going to trim off the excess. Now I need to orbit around these objects by holding down the Shift key and middle mouse button to get a 3D view. And I need to draw a circle here, but I can't draw it with the current work plane as is. So I need to go to the Visualize tab over here where it says World and select front. Now I can draw circle from this endpoint to this endpoint. And I can erase these two construction lines and set the work plane back to world. Next I'm going to use the 3D mirror command. I'm going to select the circle and hit enter. 
for the first point, I'm going to select the end point between these two polygons. For the second point, I'll select the, the midpoint on this edge. And for the third point, I'm going to drag straight up and click to end the command. And for delete source objects, the answer is no. Next, I need to draw a line from the center of this five-sided polygon using the geometric center OSNAP. To do that, I'm going to start the line command and then hover my cursor over an edge or an endpoint and you'll get a snap point here in the center. So click on that to start the line, drag up, and then click to end it. Now do the same thing for the six-sided polygon. Now I'm going to use the 3D Rotate command. I'm going to select the six-sided polygon and the line that I just drew. For the base point, I want to select the midpoint of this intersection right here. For the axis of rotation, I want to select the green circle. It'll turn yellow when you hover over it. For the start point of the angle, Come back here and select this endpoint again. And for the second point, you want to select the intersection of these two circles. And now we can delete these two circles. And you can see these lines are not meeting here. So I'm going to switch back to the front view. Now I can grab this line and drag it up. And I'm going to trim these two lines. Now I'm going to use the loft command. I'm going to select the six sided polygon. And then from the command line, I'll click point and then select the end point of the line. From the pop up menu, settings. And I'm going to switch this from smooth fit to ruled. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the five sided polygon. And now I can switch to the realistic visual style to see what I'm looking at. And it's looking pretty good so far, so let's continue. I'm going to switch back to 2D wireframe. And then I'll type view, switch to front, set current, and OK. Now I'll create a sphere from the endpoint here with a radius of 19 centimeters. Then I'll create another sphere from the same endpoint with a radius of 18 centimeters. Now I want to subtract the smaller sphere from the larger sphere, so I'll select the larger sphere, hit enter, select the smaller sphere, and hit enter. Now I want to make a copy of this sphere and move it off to the side 50 centimeters. Next, I'm going to run the intersect command. I'll select the six sided polygon and the sphere and hit enter. Then I'll move the copied sphere back into position 50 centimeters. I'll run the intersect command again, selecting the five sided polygon in the sphere and hit enter. Now I'm going to switch to the realistic visual style and I can delete this diagonal line but I'm going to keep this vertical line for now. Now I'm going to move the six-sided polygon 
over to the side, a distance of 20 centimeters. Then I'm going to run the fillet command. I'll select the object, type 0.2 for the fillet radius, and then I'll select the outer edges of the polygon. And hit enter. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the five-sided polygon. Now I can move the six-sided polygon back into position 20 centimeters. Next, I'm going to put these objects on the layers that I created at the beginning. So I'll open up my Properties palette. I'll select the six-sided object. I'll put it on the white layer. Then I'll select the five-sided object and put it on the blue layer. And I'll type view, switch to top, set current, OK. Now I'm going to run the array command. I'll select the six-sided object, hit enter. I want a polar array with a center point of 0, 0, and then come down to the command line, click on items, and I want 5. And the array command is going to make one complete object, but I want these broken up into individual objects, so I'm going to explode the array, and now I have individual objects. This next part is where it gets a little tricky, but I'll try to explain it as best I can. First thing I'm going to do is make a copy of the five-sided object and pull it off over here to the side. Next, I'll run the 3D Align command. I'll select the object, hit Enter. Now I need to pick three points for orientation, so I'm going to pick this point, this one, and this one. And over here, I need to pick three points for the destination that corresponds. So I'm going to pick this point, this point, and this point. And hopefully that made sense. Now I'm going to go to View, Top, Set Current. OK. I'm going to run the array command again, same as last time. Select the object. I want polar, 0, 0. And I want five items. And again, explode so I have individual objects. Now I'll make a copy of this six-sided polygon and drag it over. 3D align, select the object, pick three points for orientation, and three points for destination. Now, view, top, set current, OK, array, 
select object, polar, zero comma zero, items five, and explode. Now I'll run the union command and I'll select all the six sided polygons and join them together as one object. Then I'll run union again and select all the five sided polygons and join them all together. I'll go to view. Front, set current, OK. Next, I'll switch to the 2D wireframe visual style so I can see the vertical construction line. And I want to make a copy of everything, including the construction line, and move it over to the side 50 centimeters. Now I can run the mirror command. I'm going to select everything. And for the first point of the mirror line, I'm going to select the end point of the line, the construction line, and then drag over to the right and click. And yes, I want to delete the source objects. I want to go to view, top, set current, OK. Now I need to rotate the mirrored objects, so I'll select them. And for the base point, I need the end point of that construction line. And you can't really see it, but if you hover your mouse over it, you can snap to it. It's right there. And I want to rotate it 180 degrees. And then I can move back. 50 centimeters and delete the construction lines, switch back to realistic, and you can see it's all put together. And so the last thing I want to do is uh, union the six sided polygons and union five-sided polygons. Okay, there you have it. The only issue is the ball is actually a little small. If I go to view, top, set current, and I turn on my circles layer, you can see that this ball is actually only about 38 centimeters in diameter. A standard size five soccer ball is about 68 centimeters in diameter. So I'm gonna use the scale command, select the objects. My base point will be zero comma zero. My scale factor will be 1.79. And I think that looks about right. Now, back when I was still using AutoCAD 2018, I could export to FBX format and then take my models over to Blender for rendering. But I'm using 2023 now, and I just found out after I finished this tutorial that you can't export to FBX format anymore. So you could export to STL format and import that into Blender, but the imported mesh is pretty ugly and not very usable. So in my next video, I'm going to show how to create a soccer ball in Blender much easier and faster. So stay tuned for that one. Okay, that's it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.